Today we're going to look at the evolution of the Zeiss 60mm telescope. These two Zeiss telescopes are the traveling telescopes. This one is from the 1920s. Uh, this one is probably from the I 1940s. I do want to point out this is a replica mount down here. But everything else is uh, authentic. The optics on these scopes, all of them are superb. This one here has the premium uh, high quality Zeiss objective. Uh, these are AS objectives, these three. Uh, and this, of course, on the far left is the telemeter, which is the, a cemented objective. Very, very good 60 millimeter uh, also. Maybe not quite as good as the AS objectives. Uh, this shows the evolution. This is a very famous telescope, the traveling telescope. It has all sorts of uh, attachments and this so forth. This is an interesting, uh, this is a 1950s, but this is a beautiful telescope. Everything, including the mount, uh, fits in here except for the tripod. fits inside this small box, and the box is very light. This is the box for the 1950s Zeiss. Here's the telescope. That whole thing, believe it or not, fits inside there. It's very nice. I'll show you some close-ups of how nicely that fits in there. Now this does not have slow motions. This has, both of these have slow motions, altitude and azimuth. Um, kind of an interesting and strange, funky Zeiss type system. This one doesn't have that, but it's got a beautifully made friction mount. If you set the tension on these things, on this thing, it is absolutely superb. It works beautifully. All right, let me show you these components. This is the equatorial head. This is just a spigot on a tripod. This thing goes on here, like so, and it wants to, you want to have a tight fit there, so I took some care in machining that for a tight fit, so that when you lock this down, it won't rotate. Uh, this thing also, you can see, let me show you this thing back here, there's latitude markings here, and this is a bit of a pain in the neck, and in order to make adjustments to the latitude. I had to actually build a special spanner so that I could grip those grip that and turn it and adjust that down so it would hold the latitude. Uh, you can also of course use it in a straight up configuration. Here's the rest of it. <clears throat> There's the clamp. This is the clamp for the telescope. And, so of course, let's tighten this on a little. And this goes on like so. <clears throat> now you can adjust, of course, the counterweight here. These are just friction things. Uh, let's see if I can give you a sense of how that works. You tighten that down. Somehow. Tighten it down, loosen it up, and over here, if you tighten this down, you can see that you can get pretty good amounts of friction there. And you can also control it, you have pretty good control over that. So you can uh, get pretty good, just about the right balance. Once you get the telescope balanced, it's very, very effective. Got a helical focuser, much like the Telementor 1. As a matter of fact, I think it's identical to a Telementor 1. This comes with uh, this. One of the options for this is a rotating uh, eyepiece holder with a nice set of um, Zeiss eyepieces in there that are par focal. Beautiful. This is a wonderful, very user friendly telescope. Believe it or not, very simple. You don't really need those slow motions. Uh, for something like this. It's very, very nice. And this, of course, is the famous Telementor, Telementor 2. Internal focusing, so the lens is moving back and forth inside here. Uh, 
as compared with these guys. And these guys have the standard rack and pinion. This one has that. And this has, of course, the this is a beautiful long draw tube here. So it slides in and out. So these are similar in that you can make them much more compact. Shift them on down quite a ways. Uh, this one does not have a finder of any kind, which is a little mysterious. However, if you use this, rotate it into position so that you have the very nice low power, this is a Zeiss 40 millimeter uh, Huygens. That gives you a nice low enough power that you can point this thing and find what you want very easily with the 40 millimeter, uh, 40 millimeter light. I'll show you some close-ups of some of these things so you can compare and contrast them. This is the old style from the 1920s uh, quick disconnect. Anyway, here is the receptor. You can see there are three raised areas on this thing. This thing, by the way, is an M44, although it's the old style M44 uh, pre-war threads. But this will work on any M44 of that era. And this goes in here and locks on like so. Then you lock it down like that. Very, very robust. Let's see. This, of course, just screws right on. M44 pre war threads, M44, I believe, M44.9. Not sure. Anyway, they have a slightly different thread form also. So it's weird. Anyhow, now you lock this in, lock that down, and it's very, very secure. Here's another, here's another accessory that goes in there, like so, and lock it down. So that's the uh, pre-war version. Okay, here's the quick connect on the modern Zeiss Telemetry 2. And I noticed the kind of odd-shaped little hole there, and then this slips in. The nice thing about that is then you can rotate this. This, of course, is the standard Zeiss M44 threads. So that screws on like so. And then this spigot kind of goes there. And course you can put whatever you want here. Any of the normal M44 attachments. Piece adapter or whatever. Okay, so there you have the standard Zeiss, more modern, quick disconnect. Let me show you something clever about the way the Zeiss designers made this traveling telescope. The legs are designed to be, of course, they're made of wood, so they're flexible. And you take advantage of that. So you can squeeze this to store it, expand it out so that they will now fit the very nice wide tripod top, which makes uh, as a distinct advantage for having stability. Typical Zeiss, superb engineering all the way.